Hello and welcome back to the show. It's time for us to introduce our second guest, another powerful interview, trust me, because it's been a priv privilege to interview her before. She's the founder of Epilepsy Foundation Nigeria, and her name is Shea Yarabada, who has shared her story with us so graciously before, and we hope to hear it this time again. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Thank Shea. you for having me. Hello, Shea. Hi. Great to have you on the show. Your Thank smile you. is so wide and beautiful, <laughs> and you look good. Thank you. Thank you. So you're the founder of Epilepsy Foundation yes, Nigeria, which you started because you have lived with I'm epilepsy. a person living with epilepsy. Yes, you are a person living yes. with epilepsy. Yes. Now, um, let's go back to the very beginning of the story. At what point you discovered you had epilepsy? Yeah. Or at what point your parents, did you, was it like you had had seizures? Was it in, intentional or was it a mistake? Did you mistakenly find out? How um, did it happen? This feels a bit weird because I've been on the same show and talked about this, but it's fine. Um, actually, my epilepsy started a long time ago while I was about eight or five. And um, it was just a partial seizure it wasn't a major thing but the first generalized seizure i have generalized seizure is the one that you know, fall down and convulse and the saliva coming foams coming out of your mouth and all that i had that when i was 18. so i've been i literally been living with places since i was about five so it's been a very tough journey but i'm here basically you're a survivor and we're really proud of that we, and, and not only that we love people who use situations that they've you know they've had to help others and based on the experiences now when people talk about i love that um it's purple day on monday for those people who don't know and epilepsy foundation is going to be doing some things which we will be talking about you know very soon now some people talk about certain things spiritual factors um, yeah. Some people say that when you're not feeling well at some point, these are triggers for epilepsy. But what are scientific triggers for epilepsy? Mm -hmm. um, when we say scientific, it is not just scientific, it's a general stuff. Epilepsy can happen to anyone. I, I would love to start with that. And um, if you have epilepsy, you have epilepsy. It doesn't come when you're sick or when you're down. Now, a person should experience at least one seizure. It is normal if a person does. It is not compulsory, but it is normal. But if you have more than one seizure, then the person is diagnosed with epilepsy. Now, a lot of people do not understand that there is more to epilepsy than just falling down and just the normal thing they see. People will say, oh, if you touch a person having a seizure, you're going to get epilepsy. If you share cutlery with them, you're going to... I faced a lot of that. And I'm going to tell you, epilepsy is not contagious. It's a brain disorder. It's like having a um, wire in a circuit, the way you have circuit in your house. You have the blue wire and you have the red wire, which is not supposed to connect. Now, if the red and the blue connects, there's a spark. That's what happens in the brain, and that spark is like the seizure. So there are over 45 types of seizure. These seizures, the only one people are familiar with is the people that fall, which is a generalized seizure. People fall, they convulse, they jerk, but there are different kinds of seizures. I can be with you right now, and I might be having a seizure, and you would not know. You see some people, you, you say they are snobs. The person is probably having an absence seizure. The person is not aware. The person is just staring at you. It might last for five seconds or more. The person is staring at you, and you're wondering, why are you looking at me? But the person is gone. The person is having a seizure. The person might be trying to pick up something. The person keeps picking it up, and you're wondering, why are you lifting that and dropping it back? The person is having a seizure. Some people, a part of their high just has to, to twitch. You don't know. So I might be with you now. My hand is just twitching. I'm actually experiencing a seizure, but you wouldn't know. So people need to be aware, really. Mm. All right. Um, your parents found out that you had um, epilepsy. Was it at five or at 18 that they knew of At this? 18. At 18. Yes. What was their reaction? A normal African thing. My mother was like, no, my child does not have epilepsy. What are you saying? You are saying nonsense. She doesn't have epilepsy. It's just, it's just convulsion. It's just, it's just. But the truth is that everybody is going to be in denial. But the earlier you accept it, the better. And um, over time, she learned to accept. A lot of people will say, oh, I have seizure disorder. It's still the same thing as epilepsy. You have the seizure disorder, it is still epilepsy. So for a very long time, I would rather say, oh, I have seizure disorder. Because people, there's a less stigmatization attached to the seizure disorder than when I say I have epilepsy. But we're just being ignorant. Yeah. It is still the same thing. So she, she didn't accept it well. It didn't go well. But over time, she has no choice but to, to accept it. Because I'm a child, she can't mm -hmm. throw me away, yeah. really. So, so how have you managed it? Now, what some people are afraid of is because they feel that it is a very fatal condition so mm. they think that once you have it you are it's your only time you're a death sentence it is death sentence and very soon it's just a matter of time can you just enlighten people as okay. to how you manage it you look obviously they say things don't show on the face you would no one would ever imagine because you look so healthy so bright so mm. beautiful yeah. so tell us you okay. know how you've been able to manage that and how people can support okay. others aside from it. mine aside from talking about mine you can manage epilepsy in different ways 
you can go through surgery. Doesn't mean you stop having epilepsy, you just stop having seizures. It controls the seizure. You can be on medications and you can be on a diet called ketogenic diet. It's a protein-based diet. So I use medications and the truth is that it is very expensive and over time you keep taking these drugs. There are times where you get very weak, you have, you're drowsy, sometimes you get aggressive, you know. So managing it, I think it is about people who are around me because a lot of people say, well, how come you don't have scars? I actually have a few scars in private areas. Maybe I, my lap or, or my tie or something. So the thing is, if you have people around you who are supportive, you wouldn't really have to go through so much because by the time I'm about to have a seizure here, I'm probably around my friends or around my family. They know they're supposed to move the table and move things around me that can hurt me. So what I basically do is, number one, I stand up for myself. When I tell you I have epilepsy, you cannot condemn me for having epilepsy because I already told you I have epilepsy. It's a lot. I mean, there's still stigma attached. But the moment you can open up and talk, talk to people, I have epilepsy. If you have a seizure, educate them. Let them stigmatize. It's fine. But educate people around you. If you have a seizure, they know how to take care of you. Yeah. The people that would not listen will still not listen. But at least a few people will know how to take care of you. And I take medications every day. I can't mention the name of the drug because some people would think that would work for them and buy it. It is advisable for you to go see a neurologist that would give you drugs or medications that will work for you. For some people, diet works. I tried the diet. It didn't work for me. So I would say that love is what really keeps me up till now. It's not even about the medication. It is love. You mentioned yeah. stigma. Can you give us instances when you've been stigmatized? And has it affected your relationship with people? Some people will be wondering, ah, she has epilepsy. She's going to see somebody that will marry her. So have you dated? And did the people you dated know that you had epilepsy? Um, I would say that stigmatization has always been, it's still his till date. I mean, you want to create awareness to people. The moment you mention epilepsy, they're like, like, or they have to look like peace, peace, that kind mm. of thing. So the thing is, I've had people back in school who would say, oh, if you share cutlery with her, you're going to get epilepsy. It is not true. You can't. I've had people while I was serving, where the, I've, I've had names, shaking girl, banje, this, that. People give you different names. People call you different things. People run away from you. I've had friends that deserted me because I was having the current seizures. I was always having seizures back to back. It was really bad in school. And um, I would say that it has affected a lot of relationships. But the truth is, if you want to go, you can go away because my health really matters to me. I can't be going through so much and then you're somewhere stigmatizing me over that after going through so much pain. I go through pain of drugs. I go through pain of having a seizure. I don't know if my, la my next seizure will be my last seizure because you literally live like every day might be the last day. You don't know when you die really <laughs> because you, you might have a seizure here now and that's it. Or maybe I'm beside something I'm not supposed to be on. I eat my head on that thing. I'm gone. So I live my life appreciating myself every day, and I cannot let you spoil that vibe or bring your negativity towards me. So it has affected relationships. It is going to, if you're if you are listening to me right now, it is going to affect relationships. It's going to definitely affect relationships. People are going to run away from you. People are going to avoid you. But you need to always remember that you come first, and you need to stand up for yourself, All really. Right. Thank you. I love your confidence. I love your boldness. And no one can take it away from you. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Now, let's talk about some things that you cannot do and that you'll advise people who have this condition. Because there's some people like you who have embraced it, owned it, and conquered, you know, and by owning it, are dominating it. But there's some people who live in denial. I want to just live a normal life and do every other thing. But what would you say to avoid you know, to do. I know some people say don't drive, you know. You shouldn't to drive. drive. the things that you, you shouldn't should, do? You shouldn't drive. You shouldn't drive because when you drive, you put yourself at risk and the society as well. Imagine a bus driver that has epilepsy and wants to be driving. I mean, you're going to kill people. There's been accidents that people cannot even report what caused the accident because even the government is not helping matters. So you're supposed to, the FRAC gives um, driver's license, right? Yeah. Now you're supposed to check their health stuff. They just give our driver's license. And you, you hear different accidents, different road stuff. A lot of them, nobody says epilepsy cost one. But the truth is that there are a lot that is caused by that. So you shouldn't take alcohol because when you take alcohol, it is not good for you. Don't stress yourself. Don't miss your medications. Don't let, for example, now myself, one of my major triggers is emotions. I can't get too hungry. I can't get too happy. I can't get too excited. So I try to balance it. If I'm about, you're about to get me angry, I would rather walk away from that situation. So know your triggers. And for mm -hmm. some people, before you even have a seizure, you get an aura. For some people, it's a running stomach. You start feeling that you're told me. At that point, get, to, get yourself in a safe place. Don't bother about who is there. Even if you are in the mall, lie down on the floor. 
let the seizure take its course, you know. And there are sometimes that people will say, oh, I'm about to have a seizure. For me, it is actually a slight headache at the back of my head. The moment I start to feel it, I don't care where I am. I'm going to lie down on the floor. If it is somewhere, a couch, I will just put myself in the recovery position, which is on the side. The moment you're on the recovery position, you are sure that you're in a safe place. Or you tell somebody around you, even if you don't know the person, just tell the person. If that one walks away, call another person. Mm. Or just get yourself somewhere. So basically, because in Nigeria, we can't be wearing medical tags. You're not even wearing tags. You tell them epilepsy, they're running away. How much more when you wear tags and they don't even give you the chance to express yourself. They already have epilepsy, start running away. So basically, we can't wear medical tags to so even alert people. But on my phone, I have an emergency stuff that in case anything happens to me, you click on it. That's the first thing that comes up. What you should do, who you should call. Beautiful. So basically, Thank you for sharing this. You mentioned the recovery position. Yes. I want to find out what are the other things people need to know and what are the myths you need to burst. Now, some people say, oh, if you use share, share cutlery with someone who's living with epilepsy, you... <laughs> That's you, ridiculous. You know, you hear people say, oh, you can't <laughs> get married to them because if you kiss them, you experience your life, mm -hmm. oh, you're going to contract epilepsy yeah. as well. So what are the myths okay. that we need to burst? I would say, I will start with, I'm the only person with epilepsy in my family. If that is true, then everybody should have epilepsy yeah, by yeah. now. I'm the only person. It doesn't change the fact that there's two percent chance that it will be it can be hereditary, which is very it's a very very low chance. So my point is that you cannot get epilepsy. It is not contagious. You can get epilepsy from somebody being with the person. It's a brain disorder. What has my brain got to do with you? Are you going to assess my brain? I don't understand. You can't get epilepsy that way. You can't. And the truth is that a lot of people say, oh, the vomit lizard, you drink this. It is, how does the brain get to the stomach? It doesn't have any relationship. So in life, anything can happen to anybody. Epilepsy is one of those things. It can happen to anyone. And it can be treated. It is treated. It can be treated. It can be maintained. You can live a normal life with epilepsy. Not totally normal life. But you can still live a normal life with epilepsy. So you mentioned um, the things where I had asked you again. What are the things to know? You said the recovery position. Yes. So if you want to see somebody that has an um, Okay, seizure. if you see someone who is having a seizure right now, the first thing you need to do is check if they have any tight clothing, maybe a tie for, for men, or maybe somebody that has a chain, like that chain on your neck. Take it off, you know. If there's anything around them that can arm them, push it away. As you see that, don't don't restrict the person. Don't put anything in their mouth. Don't Multiple hold the person. Spoon. Don't do that. It's like seeing two wire shocking and you're putting spoon in the middle. What are you doing? You're killing the person and you're hurting yourself. If the person starts and your hand turns, what are you going to do about that? Don't force, don't put your hand, don't put anything in the mouth. Turn the person to the side. Which Once, side? You can put it to the left. You can put it to the left side. Put the person to the side, time the seizure. It shouldn't go past five minutes. If it goes past five minutes, the person's life is in danger. So you should get a pharmacy or something or hospital for, to take the person to. There are um, um, drugs or injections that abort seizure that you can use to abort the seizure while the seizure is taking its course. But you cannot abort the seizure yourself by restraining the person. You don't need to do any of that. You don't need to be scared. Don't. Once the person is calm, just ask the person, oh, are you all right? That, that post sections to it that after there are some people that for three hours they don't know what they are doing some people for three days they've not recovered from that seizure but for some people immediately they are fine they, they, they don't even know anything happened so just have normal and treat so them so five normal. minutes if it's beyond five, five minutes, minutes it's an emergency yes. you have to find you know somewhere to go yeah. I mean, thank you so much. This thank is so for enlightening me. for me personally because <laughs> I had, I, I, I was in school with someone like that and we used to be so afraid. Wow. We thought it was a spiritual problem because, no, you know, the only time people fall under anointing is in church <laughs> when they're casting out demons. So yeah. you just think, ah, they've started manifesting. So it's really, really important for you to talk about this and for people to be aware. Mm. Now, another thing that people are concerned about is so social life with regards to marriage. You know, we talked about dating, but in marriage, some people worry, would the person be able to have sex? You've talked about the fact that certain um, things excite and can trigger it. Would the person be able to have children? Would the man be fertile? Would, um, how can a spouse be able to support, you know, someone like that? These are things that some people don't, are not aware. Can you please we shed have, more light on that? We have people in the foundation that we care for who have kids. We have people who are grandmothers. We have people, Great. yes, so there's life a particular woman who is 80 think... years old and she's lived with epilepsy all her life, but she's not Nigerian, she's white. She's in the U.S. We have a lot of people support us from Good. all over the world. So you can get married, you can have children, you can, you can be in love with your spouse, you can make love, you can have sex, you can do anything you want to do. Now, everybody has different triggers. Mm -hmm. The way mine might be extreme emotion and maybe missed medication and stress, for someone else, it could be flickering lights. 
all those um, light strobes that yeah. leaks and all that. No one like watch some TV shows and they say um, viewers who have photosensitive epilepsy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So whatever. everybody has different triggers. For some people, the way I'm saying, no, don't take alcohol. Some people will take alcohol and they are fine. For some people, they are on a particular drug. It doesn't suit them during pregnancy. Well, for, so, for some people, that's what works for them. So it's really you. So you can live a normal life, including getting married with epilepsy. I mean, there are certain states in Nigeria, there are parts of Nigeria where they say, oh, you cannot marry me because you, you have epilepsy and all that. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're everywhere. But it, it is uncalled for. And to for. really stop it this is stigma, it for. is something that we all have to do together. Everybody. Very quickly, tell us what we need to do on Monday, which is Purple Day. Yes. Purple Day, we are having a campaign called Have You Seen Epilepsy? Because you don't see epilepsy, but we feel epilepsy. And um, the campaign, we're going to be having school kids. We have adults. We have... Everybody, everybody is invited. We're going to have um, professional bodies like the neurologists, the nurses, the caregivers. We have them talk about epilepsy and the parts, the, the role they play in taking care of people living with epilepsy. We're going to have people living with epilepsy come and talk up, share their experiences. We're going to have people who maybe have sisters. We have a particular woman who is coming. She lost um, a younger sister to epilepsy at the age of 28. She died two weeks ago, so she's coming to speak as well. We're having so many people. So it's all about awareness, really. So we're having it in Magodo. Just wear purple. It's not compulsory if you don't have purple. It's happening on Monday? On Monday. What this time? Monday, March 26, 10 a.m. at Magodo Phase 2. So if you want to get more details, go to our page at Epilepsy Nigeria on Instagram and on Facebook and on YouTube as well. Epilepsy so, Nigeria. Nigeria. Or check our website, www.epilepsynigeria.com. All right, great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Now, don't forget, this month is Epilepsy Awareness Month. Purple Day. Purple Day. Yes. And... Um, 26th in particular yes, is, is the day when we'll be gathering Magodo Phase 2 yes. Curtsy Epilepsy Foundation Nigeria. Nigeria yes. Thank you, Shea Thank Yara, you so It's been much. wonderful Thank having you. you on the show. All right, we're going to have to close now. I know that for many people it's like we should just keep going. There's so many things we want to talk about. But the show continues tomorrow. Please join us 12 noon to 1.30 p.m. Oliver and I will be right here. But before we go, it's um, to say happy birthday to all those who are celebrating today. If today is your birthday, happy birthday to you. You share your birthday with greats like Tony Elumelu. Happy birthday to Tony Elumelu. Happy birthday to you indeed. And don't forget, if you'd like us to celebrate you or celebrate a loved one, a close friend on Hello Nigeria, send us their picture a day before and let us know that next day is their birthday and we'll be more than happy to celebrate them with you. Now you can follow us at Wazobia Max, use the hashtag Hello Nigeria. You can follow at Epilepsy Nigeria on all social media platforms. You can follow at Oliver Modi on all social media platforms and you can follow me at Ayomayo Essay on all social media platforms. We look forward to having you again join us on Friday, Friday tomorrow. Yes, indeed. All right. Thank you so much for coming, Shay. Thank you. The message we are leaving you with today is that we are one people and we need to be able to share one love to those living with epilepsy, to those who have been abused, regardless of what their situation is. So we leave you in the hands of Femi Kuti, one love.